I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German munch. Tell me about it, Francis. He's intoxicated with himself. What are we going to do, Francis? Sober him. Lighten up, Francis. Lighten up, Francis. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast where we sit down at the kitchen table, grab ourselves an ice-cold beer, and we talk about theology. Lutheran Lemonade, to gladden the heart of man. I'm Ryan, and I totally botched my intro. So where can you find Lutheran Lemonade? You can find it on soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade on Thursday evenings. And you can find the video of Lutheran Lemonade podcast on YouTube. Just search for 1517 Films. You'll see the circle logo with 1517 and the word films below it. That's me. And on 1517 Films, I'm always contending for the faith. Once for all, delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we're going to have a bit of a laugh. I've still... I've still got the giggles about this. We're going to talk about a New Zealand preacher from Destiny Church, uh, Brian Tamaki, and something really dumb, just really dumb, that he said on Sunday. So I didn't know what Lutheran Lemonade was going to be. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go to bed. I'll do Lutheran Lemonade tomorrow. And then a buddy of mine sends me a link to this this article, Born Again Christians Immune from Cavor... Take two. (laughs) Born-again Christians immune from coronavirus, says New Zealand pastor. That's right. If you are a born-again Christian, you are immune from the coronavirus. But let's just not leave that hanging there. Let's dig into this a little bit. So what what is a born-again Christian? What is the definition? Well, Brian Tamaki of New Zealand's Destiny Church Uh, who in 2016, the article points out, blamed earthquakes on gays, this Sunday claimed that airborne demons are responsible for the coronavirus, but suggested some born-again Christians could have special protection from the deadly disease. Now, before the end of this episode, we are going to talk about a very real deadly disease that the church is bound to to speak about. But let, right now we're talking about coronavirus. And don't worry about me. I do have a beer on the table, but it's Miller Lite. It's not Corona, so I'm good. A little bit of Corona with a twist of Lyme disease would have been great for this episode. But, you know, I'm a Wisconsin boy. I'm drinking Miller. So the article continues uh, completely unbiased, by the way. The lunatic told people at Destiny's South Auckland Center, quote, Satan has control of atmospheres unless you're a born-again, Jesus-loving, Bible-believe, holy, Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled, tithe-paying believer. You're the only one that can walk through the atmospheres and have literally a protection, a Psalm 91 protection policy. Now, what on earth is a Psalm 91 protection policy? So we turn to Psalm 91, we come to verse 3. Surely he will save you from the fouler snare and from the deadly pestilences. Now, in previous episodes, you've heard me say there are three rules uh, to biblical interpretation and proper hermeneutics, and those rules are context. Context and context. So, uh, So he threw the quote at the people about the fouler snare and the deadly pestilences, Excuse me, that's going to look funny on the video because I'm going to audit that sneeze out. Or, or, yeah, I'm going to edit that sneeze out. So that's going to look funny. It also probably sounded funny. Uh, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, and that's really all that this article that I found um, from Patheos, uh, the free thinker, uh, had to say about it. Um, so I had to go to, I tried to find video clips of him saying this, audio clips of him saying this. Conveniently enough, it does not exist. Um, so I found another another article uh, from stuff.co.nz. <clears throat> Destiny Church leader Brian Tamaki blamed airborne demons and human cruelty to animals for the coronavirus outbreak. <laughs> now, I wonder if these airborne demons are the same thing as uh, the water demons or the water spirits that we have to wage war on. Uh, 
or uh, I wonder if these the airborne demons are related to the sneaky squid demon. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm making this stuff up? This is the state of modern Christianity. This is why I drink. <clears throat> but he suggested some born again Christians could have special protection from the deadly disease. Satan has control of atmospheres unless you're born again, Jesus loving, Bible believing, Holy Ghost filled, tithe paying believer. Bishop Tamaki said on Sunday morning. He cited uh, Psalm 91.3, and then he added, I don't care if you don't believe it, everybody else is susceptible. Citing re reports the disease originated in a Chinese wild animal market in Wuhan, he urged people not to blame animals eaten at the market. Uh, we go on. Um, uh, uh, Tamaki said, uh, he had studied the 10 worst pandemics and biblical history of pestilences. Uh, he's researched this, y'all. Um, uh, he added, I'm not a PhD, but I have the highest doctorates in the word of God. Nobody bigger in the nation right now. Tamaki uh, stated that the statement might sound a bit proud and then uh, discussed the speed of sneezes. <laughs> And the manner in which viruses infect the lungs, interpreting Psalm or uh, Ephesians two two, which refers to the prince of the power of the air, to Mackie said, some evil spirits invaded human bodies. Quote: Satanic spirits control invisibility on a certain level where they can energize. End quote. Now, uh, I've been wrecking my brain. I've been pouring into the research. I. I do have a rebuttal, um, a good, solid uh, theological rebuttal uh, that required as much research as Tamaki uh, into this coronavirus. So here is my theological rebuttal. Now you are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. For real. <laughs> you are really dumb, Brian Tamaki. You are really dumb. For real. That is my... <laughs> my rebuttal and that's my rebuttal because i put as much research into that rebuttal as i did <laughs> as he did into his idiot coronavirus uh statements now this is not unfamiliar to mainline american evangelicalism uh if you'll recall this little gloria nugget from about two years ago which i addressed on my youtube channel link to the video in the description below Flu, I bind you off of the people in the name of Jesus. Jesus himself gave us the flu shot. Jesus himself gave us the flu shot, says Gloria Copeland. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is this what the church is called to is this the message we are called to proclaim that if you give people like Brian Tamaki money, you tithing Christians, you are immune from the coronavirus? How is you must give my church money any different than the old phrase when a coin in the coffer rings? A soul from purgatory springs how is that any different why have evangelicals traded in the pope for their own pope why have they uh, why at the reformation were we freed from the tyranny and corruption of the roman catholic church at the time to the restored catholic church on earth the church of our fathers only to enslave ourselves back under the tyranny of a more Protestant version of papal authority that still, 500 years later, says, when a coin in the coffer rings, the soul from pestilence springs. This is the same gosh darn problem. Look, this is not what we as Christians are called to proclaim. This is stupid. This is, to, to go back to my master thesis, this is dumb. This is really dumb. For real. <laughs> what is the church called to proclaim? Jesus said that repentance and the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name. Now, if we want to talk about pandemics, if we want to talk about diseases, if we want to talk about a real epidemic that is destroying all of mankind, then we need to talk about original sin. Now, I, I, 
I know, I know you, you, you Protestants, you mainline American evangelicals. No, 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 not original sin. No, yes, original sin. God told Adam and Eve, I've got a video on this too. The problem of Genesis finally solved. Check it out on YouTube. Link in the description below. God told Adam and Eve, on the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, Adam lived to be over 900 years old. So who's a liar? God. God said, on the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And Adam and Eve did. They died. They are dead in trespasses and sins. This is the diagnosis that is given to us throughout the scriptures and made clear in the New Testament. You are dead in your trespasses and sins. Jesus would go on to say in the Gospel of John that you cannot come to him unless, you be draw unless you're drawn by the Father. The Bible says one cannot even say Jesus is Lord unless by the Holy Spirit. We are dead in our trespasses and sins, but God has made us alive again. J Jesus would say in the third chapter of John, flesh gives birth to flesh. So we, when we're born, we're born spiritually stillborn. We're dead. We're born dead. David would write in Psalm 51, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the moment my mother conceived me. So there's your age of accountability. This is the disease. This is the, the pandemic. This is the epidemic. This is the plague that is devastating the world that Christians, the church, is called to proclaim. And the remedy? One, when we rightly diagnose the disease... The remedy is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The suffering and death of resurre and resurrection of Jesus Christ for you and in your place is the cure. And this, repentance and the forgiveness of sins, this is what we are called to proclaim. We are called to preach the law to the unregenerate, unrepentant sinner and the gospel to the conscience that is burdened under the weight of of the law. This is the message and proclamation of the church. This is what pastors and bishops, Brian Tamaki, are to be proclaiming. Not that if we give your church money, we can have immunity from the coronavirus. Now, look, this is a lie that if, if, if you do, this is the heart of the prosperity gospel. You're a child of God, and God's a good father. God doesn't want you to be unhappy. God doesn't want you to be miserable. God doesn't want you to lack that which you want or desire. Sure, don't sin. Well, maybe little ones because God's in the forgiveness business, but God wants you to be happy. God wants you to have your best life. Now you need to pro declare this. You are a child of God. The reminiscent of when Satan in the wilderness after 40 days of fasting told Jesus if you're the son of God or since you are the son of God would be the right translation from the Greek since you are the son of God don't be hungry command the bread or command the, the rocks to become bread since you are the son of God cast yourself off of this tall building for the Lord has promised that he will command his angels concerning you and they will bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. See, that's a promise, just like Psalm 91.3 is a promise. Bow down and worship me and I will give you the kingdoms of the earth. This is the same lie. My goodness, when is the church going to wake up and realize that Satan is just one hell of a one-trick pony? He's not creative. He's dumb. He's really dumb. He tells, and if he's that dumb, and we keep falling for it every single time, church, how dumb are we that we keep buying into this prosperity bullshit? He swore. So did the prophet Elijah. It's called righteous indignation. How long are we going to buy into this BS? How long are we going to believe the lie? How long until we look 
the pandemic in the eye, name it for what it is, study it in depth, and realize that the cure is the perfect obedience of Christ in our place, and taking that perfect obedience to the cross, and bearing in his perfect sinless flesh the condemnation of the Father towards sin, so that, as I say in every episode, because it's so important, it bears that much repeating, so that he can give to us as a free gift his righteousness, so that we can be bought back from sin, from death, and from the power of devil, not with gold or silver, but with his precious blood and his holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death. That we, uh, the cure, the cure to the disease that the church is really supposed to be focusing on, the cure is water and God's word. That Jesus sanctifies his church, as he says in Ephesians 5, by the washing of water with the word, that we are baptized, that we are buried into this death of Jesus and raised to newness of life, that we confess our sins. For the epistle of 1 John, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It sounds an awful lot like Jesus saying repentance and the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name. The problem, the diagnosis, is that we are dead. We are born spiritually stillborn. We are dead. We cannot discern the things of heaven. The flesh cannot discern the spiritual, Paul will tell us. The remedy is the shed blood of Christ, which is applied to us when we're baptized because we participate in his death and his resurrection. And the shed blood of Christ that is given to us in the sacrament of the altar, where he says, take this and eat it, this is my body, take this and drink it, this is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. There is actual physical medicine for the disease of sin. There is, there is treatment for the cancer of sin. Baptism is the, is the, the chemotherapy the, the sacrament is the medicine that the church is called to receive as often, often. We Christians should know the disease so well, understand the cure to such a degree that we run to the altar of the Lord every Sunday. Every Sunday. That's what the church is called to proclaim. And I know I started this out being snotty and sarcastic, and I got filled with such a righteous indignation that I swore. But th this bothers me. Wake up, church. Don't buy, literally, don't literally buy into this bullshit anymore. Stop it. Stop it. We are called to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. So let me know what you think of this episode in the comments below on soundcloud.com, in the comments below on YouTube. Did I go too far? Did I say too much? Did I get this wrong? Am I off my rocker or am I telling the God's honest truth that in the last days people will abandon pure, pure doctrine and seek for themselves preachers who will scratch their itching ears and they will wander off into myth <laughs> the myth of air demons the myth of water demons the myth of sneaky squid attacks the myth of prayer warriors who can sing contemporary worship songs to hurricanes this is not historic biblical christianity and through the anger and through the laughter this is a serious issue and I leave you with this. Yeah, we can laugh at Brian Tamaki, and we should laugh at Brian Tamaki. And yes, there was a couple of ad hominem attacks toward him, but I also think I formed a relatively biblically articulate argument against his statements. So just like the prophet Elijah mocked on a personal level the prophets of Baal, he also mocked with the truth their beliefs and proved it by the power of God when his altar lit and theirs didn't. And just as he had 
every priest of the prophet of Baal slaughtered, we too, as Christians, should put to death false teaching. We should expel these people from the gathering of the church. We should excommunicate them, make a public declaration. You are outside of the Christian faith until you repent. You are excommunicated. <sighs> Take a drink. So I guess... I guess this started out really light and got really heavy, and I'm sorry. Struggling to find a way to end this episode, so um, I'm going to end it the way I end every YouTube episode. With a blessing for you, faithful, Bible-believing, free gift-receiving Christian. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross. For all of your sins. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade.